Hey family, it's a pleasure for me to be with you today. I want to share with you something that's really been grabbing my heart uh, lately. It's, it's been catching me and I thought it would be encouraging for you. Today's scripture, we're going to look at Isaiah 714, Isaiah 714. And it says, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now catch that. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. This is a moment where God is showing off, showing out. God's going to do the work. Not we're doing the work, but God is doing the work. God's going to give you a sign. You can't earn this sign. You can't work for this sign. You can't create this sign. But God himself is going to give you a sign. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, a virgin or a maid, a young girl who's never been with a man is going to conceive and bear a son. I don't need to tell you that this is a miracle. This is miraculous. This is special. All the components necessary for birth weren't there. So God stepped in and did something on our behalf that we once again couldn't do. His mother couldn't do it. This virgin could not do it. But God was doing it. Shall bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Someone once asked me, well, why isn't Jesus's name Emmanuel? And because Emmanuel is more of a title or a representation of who he was. It wasn't supposed to be his literal name, but that concept of Emmanuel would mean so much. It would mean so much. It would change everything. This Emmanuel idea. Emmanuel simply means God with us. That's what I want to talk to you about today. This idea of God with us. God, who is the creator, the one who exists in unapproachable light, the uh, one who spoke everything into existence, he would be with us, amongst us, right here, right now, close. And it would be something that God himself would initiate. There wouldn't be this great space between the two of us, but God was going to be near. And I know sometimes we can fail to see God in that way. We can fail to see God as God with us and we can see God as God over there or God with the good people or God with them, but not God with me, God with us, God right here, God in my space. This pure, holy God is desiring to be in the midst of the broken and the wounded and the missing. This amazing God wanted to move right into the neighborhood, right where we live. He wanted to live amongst us. This idea of God with us, when Isaiah wrote it, carried the people for centuries, hundreds and hundreds of years, in an expectation that they would experience God in a powerful way. They were waiting. There was an expectation that God is going to come and be in our midst because it mattered that much. All of human history centers around this idea, this concept, concept of Emmanuel, God with us. God with us matters more than we could ever imagine. Think about this. In Genesis chapter 2, we see man and woman in the garden with God, with unrestricted relationship, unrestricted connection. This beautiful interaction between man and God was happening there. And when they lost that place, when the fall happened, when sin entered the equation and they had to be removed from God, that is a great tragedy. Because... What they had was special. God loved us so much that he created us. He made us for relationship, for connection. He made us so he could be with us. That's the point. God wanted, he, we were different than the animals. We were different than the angels. We're different. God wanted a creature that would want him as he would want them. Emmanuel, God with us. And when they lost that, it, it 
really hurt. And at the end of all things, in Revelation 22, we see the same thing. We see Eden restored. We see God and his people in unfettered, unrestricted relationship once again. It happens again. They are both reconnected. This powerful connection is reestablished that God would be with us for eternity. So at the beginning of all things and at the end of all things is this relationship, this connection, this God and his people. And it's something that he started. He initiated we can benefit from it but it's his idea the God of the universe wants to know you be with you be close to you he wants to know me be with me be close to me and it's not based on my goodness my ability it's not based on my talent it's based on his goodness his greatness and his willingness and desire to be in relationship with his child you are his child and he wants to be in relationship with you we see this all through the biblical narrative. We see Moses in Exodus chapter 3 being welcomed into a God story. Moses was a murderer and a fugitive, and God wanted to be in relationship. Moses was living out in the desert tending sheep, and God had a bush that was burning but wasn't burning and moved in relationship, and he said, hey, where you are is holy ground. Take your shoes off, Moses. I want to be in relationship with you. And yes, it was holy because God entered fallen humanity he entered our state god is there with moses and he eventually would help moses become a leader that would help rescue all the people of god from slavery miraculously god would use moses to rescue the people from slavery and going down the line god wanted to move in relationship with the people he helped moses build a thing called a tabernacle which is a place where god's presence could dwell because god is holy other different special now moses is welcomed in and the people are welcomed in and god said okay i, I want to be in your midst but I can't be too close because I'm holy, so create a tabernacle. And so Moses established a tabernacle, this holy space where God would exist. And so he was welcomed. They were welcomed in. And right in the middle of the camp of the people of God in the wilderness, you had the presence of God there. And every time God moved, they had to move. But it was this Emmanuel idea that God is with us. He wants to be with us. They didn't say, hey, God, build us a tabernacle so you can be close. God, that was God's idea. I want to be near you. But the barrier that would come in is the same barrier that came in at the beginning. Sin. And so they'd go on this dance where God would pull in close and then sin would push them out. David tried to build a permanent place for God to be. Years later, he wanted a permanent place for God to be. And God didn't let him do it, but he let his son do it. And when God had now the temple instead of the tabernacle when it was finished in second chronicle 7 solomon finishes the temple and god's presence comes down in fire and fills the place so much that nobody can stand and everybody has to back up because once again he's holy and he tells them look i want to be with you get rid of the sin that would separate us why because i want to be in close proximity to my people emmanuel god wants to be with us and over time god would speak through different prophets he would show up and they'd be like in awe. Why? Because God is here. My favorite one is when they go, I am undone. And the whole idea of I'm undone is I'm about to poop myself. Because a holy God wants to be with me. He wants to be in my midst. He's here. You see this when Jeremiah was called. You see this when Isaiah was called. D D D Daniel was in awe. They would always be in awe. Why? Because God would want to be in their midst. And then enter the Son of God, Jesus, where this literally was happening, where God wasn't just going to be close or near, but he was going to be just like us. He was going to conform to our image. God was going to take on a human suit. Colossians 1 and 15 says this, uh, he is the image of the invisible God. He is Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God. God is here. John 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then down in verse 14, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Once again, God wants to be near his people. God wants to be right here. You see, why am I saying this? It's because we can sometimes miss the beauty of God being in our midst, of God wanting to know us, be connected to us, and be in relationship with us. No matter how hard or troubling or struggling our lives are, God is Emmanuel. Even when Jesus left the earth, he says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. See, when we only think about the nearness of God during Christmas, I think we 
fail to understand the power of the nearness of God. Christmas is a special time because the whole world is paying attention to our infinitely beautiful God who wants to come near. But we should keep Christmas in our hearts always. Like Dickens said at the end of uh, A Christmas Carol, he said, Scrooge knew how to keep Christmas well. It's this idea that you carry Christmas all the time. We need to carry the reality of the presence of the Son of God always. Not just during the holiday season, but forever. Why? Because having God with us should change everything about us. It should change how we think, how we feel, how we move. Why? Because God is always here. He loves me. He knows me. He sees me. He cares about me. He will get me through whatever I'm going through. God will guide me no matter what. I can never out sin his presence. I can never out sin his love. He is here. And unlike Dickens, now you don't have to worry about three ghosts chasing you off. We have one ghost and he's holy. And Jesus says he's going to be in you. So we have this current and abiding presence of God always. I want to remind you to keep Emmanuel in your mind, in your heart, because God is with you.